Now let us see the compounds of boron. The first on the list is, is the borax. Borax is generally having the formula Na2B4O7 10H2O. But its actual correct formula is Na2B4O5OH4 because it contains, it's basically a tetra unit uh, which is having a tetra boron unit, having a unit of, of four borons bonded to each other through a common oxygen. And there is one oxygen which is actually forming a bridge between the two uh, diagonally opposite boron atoms. And this is how we have a B4O5 unit, each having one, one, one uh, uh, OH group also, that's why it's OH4. And actually, in reality, there are eight water of water molecules as water of crystallization. So its actual formula is Na2B4O5 OH4 and it's 8H2O. Now, what is most important to notice that this borax, or uh, the, the compound, actually when added to water, makes the water alkaline because of the formation of NaOH and boric acid, which is H3BO3. This borax, when heated, first loses water of crystallization, and it, it's called sodium metaborate, which on further heating, leads to the formation of sodium metaborate, this NaBO2, and boric, this B2O3 is called boric anhydride. Now this NaBO2 takes the shape of a glassy bead on solidification, transparent glassy bead. And when mixed with the oxides of the transition metal, they form what? They give color. That is why it is this, this particular glassy bead and its test is used to identify the cation present in any given salt, which is also called a borax bead test in your qualitative analysis. We can, I can give you an example. Like when this glassy bead is actually heated with a cobalt salt, which is actually on when heated, we get cobalt oxide, which combines with this metaborate and leads to the formation of this cobalt metaborate, which is actually is blue in color. So that glassy bead acquires, which was actually a, initially a transparent glassy bead, acquires a blue color and that confirms the presence of cobalt. So this is what we have bor borax B test and the properties of borax. The next compound of boron is bor boric acid, which is also called orthoboric acid. It is obtained by treating what? By treating uh, the aqueous, uh, the borax with aqueous acidified solution. Uh, when the, we take boron in an acidified uh, aqueous medium, it, it gets hydrolyzed basically and forms NaCl and boric acid, which is H3BO3, which is also written as BOH thrice. Now, this boric acid is acidic in nature. It is actually is having a, a, a structure of a B2O3 unit, or we can say actually uh, there are there's a boron which is having three OH groups, and since these oxygens are sp3 hybridized, they are actually are in these directions with two lone pairs like this. Now these gets actually hydrogen bonded with the neighboring other boric acid units, and these due to these hydrogen bonding, they almost acquires what a uh, this hexagonal type of a structure. So it is having a layer structure, this boric acid. Now another important thing about this boric acid is that this boric acid, though it's an acid, it's, an, it's, it's not a protic acid, protonic acid. It doesn't release this H plus ion from any of the OH groups. Rather, being a Lewis acid, as it is an electron deficient species, when actually taken in water, it combines with water accepts its OH minus ion from the water, forms BOH4 minus unit and releases H plus ion. So it's a not a, it's not a protic acid, it's a pro, it's not a protonic acid. It is it is an acid because it accepts OH minus ion and it doesn't it is it's not an acid because it releases H plus ion. That's a very peculiar thing we have. And uh, by acquiring this kind of a tetrahedral uh, unit of with four hydroxide units, it, it, its electron deficiency is satisfied and this is how it shows the acidic nature. The next compound of boron is diborane, which is B2H6. It basically is a dimer of a boron hydride BH3 which cannot exist independently. That's why it dimerizes to form B2H6. It leads to the formation of B2O3 along with water. Remember when it is actually being uh, combusted in oxygen or it catches fire, it combines with oxygen, forms B2O3 and H2O. This reaction is highly exothermic in nature and which is having a delta RH uh, not of minus 1976 kilojoule per mole. It also gets easily hydrolyzed and leads to the formation of boric acid and releases hydrogen gas. 
the diborane remember being a lewis electron deficient compound easily combines with electron rich species like dimethyl uh, uh, amine and it gets what cleavage of the diborane takes place through its monomeric unit ph3 dot nm3 the bonding between our ph3 n and the trimethyl amine is basically the dative bond due to which the electron deficiency of this boron gets satisfied so the cleavage of the diborane to its monomeric unit takes place when it is combined with electron rich species similar reaction is seen when it is this diborane is reacted with carbon monoxide which is again is an electron rich species donates a pair of electrons through dative bond and therefore we get this boron in the in the monomeric unit bh3.co there is one more very important reaction of diborane it is when reacted with ammonia initially it forms bh2 ns3 twice plus b uh, bh4 minus intermediate which on heating gets converted into b3 n3 h6 and hydrogen gas this b3 n3 h6 is called inorganic benzene or borazine so this is what we have uh, borazine inorganic benzene which is actually having a structure very similar to what we are having benzene in the organic chemistry it's having uh, alternate uh, boron nitrogen bonds like this and what we find is that each of these is having one one hydrogen and the nitrogen's lone pair is actually being shared by with this boron with a dative bond like this so this is what we are having the structure of borazine or inorganic benzene now let us see the structure of diborane in this diborane both these borons are sp3 hybridized now so we know that each boron is having three electrons two are being shared with these two hydrogen atoms like here in this case and they are in the same plane the boron and the two hydrogens but the third electron of this boron and of this boron is shared between this hydrogen which is also having one electron and the other boron this high borons one electron this hydrogens one electrons are being again being shared in in such a way that these two electrons actually are present between three atoms in technical language like normally we know that each bond can be called a two center two electron bond because two atoms are being held together by the two uh, two electrons uh, the nu nucleus of the two atoms are held together by two electrons we call them a two center two electron bond we call this bond as three center two electron bond it's also called a banana shaped bond or a bridge bond because this hydrogen is actually is actually be making be acting as a bridge between the two orbitals of the two boron atoms and these two electrons one of this boron and one of this hydrogen is keep is actually holding the three atoms together in a very similar way one more hydrogen forms a bridge bond between the one uh, with its one electron and one electron of this boron and it actually shows a bridge bonding between the bo one orbital of this boron and one orbital of this boron and this is how what we find is that these are in one plane and these two hydrogens are perpendicular to this plane the angles are 97 degree of these two hydrogens whereas the angles of these two hydrogens are 120 degree bond lengths of these boron hydrogens are also different the ones which are lying on the same plane are actually at, at a 119 picometer and one which are actually are perpendicular are 134 picometer because they are having actually more stretched because of the bridge bonding so this is what a typical structure of the diborane we have which is very unique in its in its own way because we are having in this the three center two electron or banana shaped bond also remember this diborane is used to form boron hydrides like any bh4 or LiBH4. Now, all of these boron hydrides are very strong, very good reducing agents, which are very, very commonly used in the organic compounds or synthesis of other organic compounds by normally reducing them or as alkenes to their uh, reduced products.